the street. In this video, I want to talk about regression channels. Regression channels are a technical analysis tool I use quite a bit. I want to go over how I use them, a couple things you need to be aware of when you're using them, and how you can incorporate some other technical analysis tools when you're using regression channels. So I'm using TradingView here. Regression channels are available in other platforms as well. And essentially what it is, you can see I've drawn a couple here. Let's just delete one and then redraw it so you can see how it works. So our regression channel will draw a line of best fit or encompass most of the price action between any two prices you give it. So I would say that we had this big downward move here. The price oscillates a bit. So really going back to this point here is when we can see a potential, what looks like a pretty choppy downward range. So we could connect these two points from all the way back here to the most recent price. And we get a trend channel that looks like this. And you can see that the channel has encompassed most of the price action. This is, remember, a channel of best fit. It will encompass most of the price action, but you will have spikes out. And these would kind of be anomalous periods or where the price doesn't spend a lot of time. Inside this channel is where the price spends most of its time. Now, if you go to inputs, you can set how much of a deviation that is. And I've chosen high, low, close divided by three as the source data. You could use the closing prices as well. And you could up this to increase. You can see that upper band moving. So that would encompass more price action. By doing that, it basically just catches the very tips of these uh, rallies and highs and lows. But let's put it back to where it was. Because how I use these is I'm just looking for general areas. I'm not going to use this as an exact entry point. If you followed any of my trading, other videos, my analysis, trade ideas, you'll typically note that I look for consolidations in important areas. So those would include, and then I like to see a uh, move in a direction that I'm expecting. So in this case, you can see right here, we had a consolidation. And the expectation would be that since it's near the high of the channel, it would break to the downside, but instead it broke to the upside. So that would be an opportunity you could maybe capture a short-term long trade, but then ultimately I'm looking for a short trade. Here we had a consolidation that broke to the downside and we moved to the bottom of the channel. So I can maybe just draw something on there. It's important to note too that uh, this regression channel is based on information that we now know. Whereas back in the day, let's say we had drawn it back there. Let's delete both of these. We can see how it would have looked at that time. Right, so it still looked pretty much the same once we had had this channel developing. Uh, if we drew it right till up to about here, or even if we drew it out to here, we can see that that price is right near the top of that channel. So it's an area that we'd potentially be looking to short. So this isn't doesn't only work in hindsight. We can use these channels in real time, and we'll look at a couple. Uh, trades that these helped me out with recently. So they do help in real time and then as more price action unfolds we can adjust and I have these extended out to the right but you can also uh, choose to just keep them extend lines and then you can see how far you've drawn them out. Right, so you can see that we're near the top of that channel. You could also interpret this as a breakout, in which case, if we have broken out, this pullback should hold above it, and it does not, it just collapses right back into it. 
as we continue to move this channel forward. Here's another consolidation. We're moving down toward the bottom of the channel. You could look at a consolidation there, break out to the downside, looking for targets near the bottom of the channel. And as this channel just kept on going, we can just continue to incorporate more price action in it. So that's one way we can use them. I do like to have them extended out to the right, just so that it gives me a bit of a context going forward and can provide some price targets so that if, say right now, we were to see a bottom coming off of this, I've noted a couple other bottoms where it's a little bit messy sometimes, two or three tests of the bottom. So even though we've rallied off this, this doesn't mean it's uh, we've entered an uptrend. We could pop up, move back down, pop up, move back up, uh, move back down before we see a bigger rally. But they just give us an area where this potentially could be an area where a bottom occurs. It doesn't mean it will, but it's just an area to watch. We also had coming out of right at the start of the year, this downward regression channel. So today or yesterday, we were having a consolidation right near the bottom of the long-term channel and also right at the bottom of this short-term channel. Now remember, these channels don't give us exact trade signals. They don't tell us where exact lows will be. They just give us an idea of where we want to start looking for those consolidations, or at least that's how I use them. So here we had a consolidation and a breakout to the upside. I've been short pretty much entire the entire month of February as we had this big drop and the trend channel, these trend channels would have helped you keep in that trade. As you can just see, it just relentlessly falling. There's nothing to indicate that you should get out until this. We have a consolidation then a breakout to the upside. So you could look at this tiny channel as an area to potentially look for a target at the top of the channel. That'd be around right around 109. And then longer term, if we see a bottoming pattern, you can also look at this big channel as a potential area to start closing out your longs. If you were to get long in here, or if we start rallying, any pullback, consolidation, and breakout to the upside, since we're moving in this channel, and if we've made a bottom, we'd be looking for that price to continue moving toward the top of the channel, it has, as it has done for the last 20 months or so. That doesn't mean it will continue but having traded this strategy all along, you would have done fairly well uh, utilizing this kind of method. Then once again, you could use a trend channel if you wanted going higher. Sometimes they're not relevant. Sometimes they are. So as you can see here, trend channel broken. Then maybe you'd want to draw another one once you had a couple waves going on. So you start to see some choppy price action here. See, you do get a little consolidation there, but you wouldn't want to take this long even though it's in a rising channel because we're right near the top of a much longer term regression channel. So you can look at essentially multiple time frames in a way, even though we're only looking at the daily chart in this case. You can have channels based on much more price action which give you a much broader idea of where the price is moving. And then you can draw these smaller channels to help you isolate where you should potentially be looking for longs and shorts. So on the bigger channels, once you get to the top of the channel, looking for more shorts. And then you could also look for potential areas where you're near the top of a shorter term regression channel. So in this case, this trade would have been potentially interesting does break to the downside, but then we have a sharp reversal, so you could use a trailing stop loss. As I indicated, at tops and bottoms, the price isn't always clean. Sometimes you'll have multiple tests. In this case, it was very clean, moves up, consolidates, breaks down, and pretty much sells off to the bottom of the channel. That won't always happen, so usually on the first attempt, I'll use something like a trailing stop loss. So this was the first time the price had got to the top of the channel in a while, it sells off, use a trailing stop loss. You can drop down to an hourly, four hour chart. And if the price consolidates and moves back to the upside, you get out. Once it's made a couple attempts or you get one of these overshoots, it's looking a little bit better. Uh, let's get rid of some of this just to clean up the chart a little bit. We'll talk about some other technical analysis tools I use. So in this case, we had this spike high 
price moves above it, kind of enters a consolidation of its own here. And this is what you could consider a false break. It just popped above that high, couldn't really gain any traction, and then just sells off aggressively. Taking this short trade is a little more aggressive than say waiting for the bigger sell off, a pop up, and then a consolidation. So you could look maybe at shorting this one once the price has made a bit of a more definitive move off the top of the channel and started moving lower. You could also wait for some sort of like engulfing pattern like this, which would probably be more visible on a four hour chart. So they're very sharp movement. Engulfing patterns, I will look at multiple bars. A bullish or bearish engulfing pattern is typically considered uh, a bearish engulfing pattern would be one big green bar followed by one big red bar. But I consider if it takes place over several bars, to me that's still a reversal. A lot of people won't look at that, but to me, you had these really big green bars. If that low is taken out on that green bar, especially if it's in an area that I'm potentially interested in, we did have, I had drawn a trend line here. Uh, again, trend lines, same as regression channels, don't indicate exact areas, but it's areas you want to look for consolidations at. So even here, you could have been potentially eyeballing this and saying, hey, we're pretty close uh, to this trend channel. We've popped higher a couple other times, stalled out, and then just sold off. So even though we had a nice pop here, we could be looking for the short trade or you could wait for a little bit more confirmation to the downside and look at any other of these uh, consolidations. Because remember, we've started to move back down toward the bottom of the channel off that high. And if we drew our channel in there, we're only gonna go up to the point that we know. Maybe we're right about here in real time. Now we can see we're right near the top of that channel, selling off toward the bottom of the channel we also know about our big channel. So we're working our way toward the bottom of this big channel. We could also use this small channel as a guide. And then we can just continue updating it as the price moves lower. So they aren't meant to forecast exactly where you're gonna be trading. I don't recommend that you have to use them. I just find them quite useful for giving areas where we can potentially look for trades. And you'll update them as they come available, and it'll just help you isolate maybe some higher probability areas to look for trades. To me, it gives an overall context of how the price is moving. And once we start moving toward the top, maybe we don't quite reach it, we have the pullback, we can just look at those consolidations and decide which way is a little bit more likely uh, that we'd prefer to trade the breakout. You could trade a breakout in both directions with a trailing stop loss. But ideally, I kind of want to trade, if the price is moving in a big channel like this, I would prefer to be moving in the direction uh, where it's heading toward the next channel bottom or top. So in this case, we're moving toward the bottom. I prefer being short. In this case, we've started to see a pop we haven't confirmed that we've made a bottom yet, but I thought this was a good enough rally and a good enough long-term support area based on this short-term channel and this long-term channel to potentially cons uh, to consider a long, which I took on the consolidation breakout. And we'll see, we'll trail it. We'll see if it uh, continues moving up. If that's the case, great. If we start to see a pullback and a choppier bottom, then I can look for other consolidations and breakouts to the upside in this area or maybe this area down here as the price comes back to retest the area. Or the price could just collapse down through the channel. And in that case, that's also fine. We traded our area. Maybe we lost on it. Maybe we made a little bit of money. And once that channel breaks, we no longer consider it. So if we had a really strong drop out of here, Maybe we'd say this channel no longer really applies and we'd start drawing some new regression channels. So we don't have to stick to these just because we've drawn them. Once, just like any chart pattern you draw or any trend line you draw, once it's no longer relevant, 
this one moving up here so it helps support the price price breaks below it bounces back up to it sells off of it other than for historical reference that's no longer needed so we can just delete them as uh, as we no longer need them so that's how I use the regression channels maybe it helps you out maybe it helps you see the price action or maybe it just confuses you so that's not a recommendation that you have to use it it's just one tool that myself and I know a number of other traders I've uh, had some lessons with have really benefited from uh, this method and just using an overall context for the market to help them better isolate positions where they should be trading where they shouldn't be and hopefully that helps you out as well and if not that's okay too. So until next time, happy trading.